audio can sync. All right, so hello, welcome. If you would like to build an ant weight or beetle weight combat robot, and you don't really have any experience with RC systems, then this video is for you. So I'm gonna explain the common electronics used, and I'm gonna work from very basic to more complicated. And so hopefully this provides kind of a beginner tutorial video. If you want to get started, you'll know how to wire your robot up. All right, so your first choice in terms of electronics is whether you should just salvage them from a toy or if you should buy uh, an RC system. So if you're brand new to this, uh, salvaging the electronics and the remote and all that from a, a toy can be a really good option. You're gonna wanna look for two things. One, tank drive, so you push both thumbsticks forward in order to go forward. Most uh, combat robots don't use rack and pinion steering like RC cars, so you'll wanna find a toy with tank drive. And two, you'll wanna find one that has selectable frequencies. It could be labeled on the car as like 27 gigahertz or 49 gigahertz, or it might just be labeled as one and two. You won't wanna use the small little infrared remotes that are commonly used for hex bugs. If you go with this option, first you're gonna to to take the toy apart and you're going to see something like this. You'll have a, probably a circuit board and a battery, and then it's going to have wires leading to the motors of the toy. Now you can just remove the toy's motors and connect these wires to whatever motor you want. And so this lets you pretty much, you have your electrical setup already done for you and you just attach your motors. I recommend like GM3 solar robotics gear motors. Those tend to be a good kind of starting option and they're pretty cheap. If the motor doesn't spin the way you want it, you just reverse the leads to the wires and it'll reverse the direction of the DC motor. Now RC toys aren't going to meet any of the safety requirements for having a weapon. So you're pretty much limited to a wedge bot if you go with this option. So now let's take a look at buying an RC system. So first you're gonna need a 2.4 gigahertz uh, transmitter and receiver. The transmitter is just the remote. These don't have to be too expensive. This one was $26 from Hobby King. The one feature that I would make sure you have is channel mixing. So I'll get into actually how to set up channel mixing later in the video, but basically channel mixing lets me control the robot's drive with just this right thumbstick, which leaves the left thumb open for controlling the weapon. This one requires a cable to plug it into the computer in order to change the remote settings. Some remotes have an LCD on them, which lets you change the settings on the remote itself. For a beginner, it might be helpful to have a remote that you can do that, uh, but this has worked fine for me. Now that you have your remote and receiver, you're gonna need some motors and stuff in order to control your robot and uh, add weapons. So there are four options for that. Uh, servos, continuous rotation servos, and then DC motors and brushless motors. DC motors and brushless motors require corresponding speed controllers that you pair with them in order to control them. So with the servo, it's pretty simple. The servo has a little cable on it. Uh, this is a PWM cable, which stands for pulse width modulation. It has a ground wire, which is brown or black. It has a positive wire, which is red. And it has a signal wire, which tells the servo what angle it should move at. Servos don't rotate all the way around. They just have a range of angles they can go to. Uh, it's typically about 180 degrees. So they're good for lifters and clamps, um, but they won't be used for your drive motors. So to attach it, um, you just plug it into one of the channels of the receiver like this. Now, if you're just driving a servo, your receiver is also gonna need some battery power. So I just have that drawn here. Now, receivers can't usually take very high voltage. Look at your receiver, make sure your battery matches the voltage that it expects to have in this input. Typically, it's like five or six volts. You can't typically run the receiver off of like a 12 volt battery. Three more things about servos really quickly. One, you can wire two servos to the same port and they'll both move identical to each other. Two, buy servos that have metal gears, not plastic gears. And three, make sure your servos have enough torque. So if you've got a two inch uh, or five centimeter lifting arm and you're trying to lift a one pound or 0.45 kilogram robot at the end of that lifting arm, your servo is going to need to have at least this much torque or it's not going to be able to lift the opponent. So the second option are continuous rotation servos. Instead of just going between different positions, continuous rotation servos, as their name suggests, can rotate continuously, just like a DC motor. 
Now you can either purchase these or you can build your own using modified regular servos. So a regular servo has what's called a potentiometer in it. And if the servo is commanded to go to say 50 degrees, that potentiometer tells the servo its position. It'll be, hey, you've reached 50 degrees, you can stop moving now. Modifying a servo for continuous rotation typically involves removing that potentiometer. So now when you command the servo to go to 50 degrees, it'll try to get there, but there'll be no potentiometer to tell it that it's reached its destination. So it'll just keep rotating and rotating and rotating. Only some servos can be modified for this, but it's worth noting because it's a pretty good beginner option. You don't need any speed controllers. You just plug the continuous rotation servo into your transmitter, just like you would a regular servo, except it now rotates around and around and around. Now let's talk about option three, which are brushed DC gear motors. And these are gonna be paired with a brushed electronic speed controller in order to drive them. So here's what that would look like when it's wired up. You're gonna have your brushed electronic speed controller, which will connect to your DC motor. That'll also connect to the receiver and it'll connect to a battery. Now, most electronic speed controllers will have a battery elimination circuit built in, which means once you connect the speed controller to your receiver and you connect the speed controller to its uh, battery, your receiver no longer needs an extra battery uh, input. So we can erase that here and the speed controller is going to provide the receiver with all the power that it needs. Now, some brushed ESCs are capable of powering two motors. Uh, which is really convenient because you can have one of those uh, two channel brushed ESCs control your right drive motor and then your left drive motor. Here's what that would look like wired up. You'll just have two signal wires, uh, one for channel one and one for channel two typically. And some of these uh, two motor brushed ESCs are capable of channel mixing. Um, so if you buy one of those, then you don't need to worry about channel mixing on the remote. And this is the setup I use for the Crave Monsters. Now you can wire two uh, motors to one uh, channel of the uh, brushed ESC. You just need to make sure with uh, speed controllers that you spec the amperage appropriately. So if your motors are capable of drawing one amp, make sure that the speed controller is able to provide that. And if you're gonna use a 12 volt battery, make sure that 12 volts was, is within the uh, input voltage range of the speed controller. Last up, we have brushless motors, and these are wired up similar to DC motors. Um, they're very powerful. They're usually used to power spinning weapons with little or no gear reduction. And uh, like brushed motors, they've got a speed controller that goes with them, and the speed controller will often have a battery elimination circuit built in. Brushless motors will have three wires, not two like brushed motors, and they come in in-runner and out-runner forms. Out-runner forms have a shell of the motor that spins, so the entire outside shell of the motor spins. In-runners have the uh, spinning parts internal. A lot of brushless speed controllers do not have a reverse. They just run in one direction. So if you want to use uh, brushless motors for your drive, you're going to need to make sure you buy an ESC that has reverse or you can get into flashing different software on your ESC. As a beginner, I recommend these just for your weapon and then stick with the brushed DC motors for the drive. So now I've talked about all the parts. Now I'm gonna show you how a common spinner like a drum spinner or a vertical disc spinner would be wired up. Now with this wiring setup, you'll see that the uh, weapon motor is wired to channel three. And that's because on the remote I have here and on many RC airplane remotes, channel three is the throttle and it does not have a self-centering gimbal. So you can see how this gimbal pops back to center, but channel three doesn't, it just stays where it is, which lets you throttle up, let go, and the weapon will continue to spin. And if your remote has a lockout, make sure that's flipped, otherwise the throttle won't do anything. Also, I forgot to mention, but if the weapon spins in the wrong direction, just flip any of the two wires going to that motor and it'll reverse the direction. Next up is the wiring diagram for the Crave Monster. So this uses a dual motor uh, ESC for the drive. There are two motors to the left side, two motors for the right side drive. And then there's a servo on channel three for the mouth. The one issue I had with the Craves was that the servo from the mouth was drawing too much current from the receiver, which would cause the receiver to disconnect. So I added a 12 volt to 6 volt DC to DC converter and then I powered the servo off of that instead of powering the servo off of the receiver. So I just took that red line from the receiver and I ran the red line to the, uh, 
to the DC to DC converter. So um, that pretty much solved my issue and I didn't have any more disconnects after I did that. All right, so now I'm gonna briefly try to explain channel mixing without the uh, intricacies of how to set it up because they all depend on what remote you have. So on this remote, up and down on the right thumbstick controls channel one, which is the left motor drive of the Crave. And right and left controls channel two, which is the right motor drive. And so that's not a good way of, of doing things because you'd have to press the, the uh, joystick like upright to trigger both channels to drive the robot forward. So channel mixing basically makes up and down on the remote affect both channel one and channel two. So when you press up, both motors drive and the robot goes forward. You also need to mix the left right direction with both channels one and channel two. So when you drive the, um, the robot to turn right, the left motor drives forward and the right motor drives back. So that was a terrible explanation. I am sorry. I'm just going to try to find a flight test video that explains channel mixing and like link that, link that below because that'll be way better. <laughs> well, on that uh, not quite helpful note, um, hopefully some of this helps people and, um, and have a good day. Hopefully you can use this to get started and build your own robot. See ya.